satisfied. I mean, I can't be any more satisfied than I'm satisfied. There's things go wrong, uh, but I'm satisfied. I, I, I mean, he has never done anything to me that has made me want somebody different. He's never done anything to me that makes me uh, think there's another way. Uh, take your Bibles. Take your Bibles. Go to uh, somewhere. Romans. Romans chapter 13, and then we're going to go to first, Second Peter chapter 1. Romans 13. I tell you, man, I'm satisfied. Uh, Dr. Peacock always talks about that old lady that was in his daddy's church, and she was, I'm satisfied. I can probably sound like that now. My throat's all messed up. I'm satisfied. And she'd go around, and everybody look at her like she's strange. Uh, well, no, you're the strange ones. If you're looking at her like that, man, she's, uh, she's got it right. You know why? She spent her whole life, and she knows that Jesus Christ is the only answer. He's the way, truth, and life. I learned that, man. I learned that a long time ago, but over the last 43 years, I've realized uh, that he is the only way, and uh, there is no other way. Uh, than him, and once you get in that way and you know him, you get satisfied. You just, I know that 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 one day I'm going to die and take my last breath, or the rapture is going to happen, and I'm going to be with him. I already know that, and I know that this is the only time I got an opportunity to do something for him. You will never in heaven be able to do anything more for Jesus Christ. You will not be able to do it. You're going to be perfect there. You're going to do everything. You may have a job assigned. You may go do something, but down here. Brethren, we can do something for him that can never be done in eternity. And he gives you the opportunity to do it. Romans, Romans chapter 13, verse 11. He says this. He says, Paul's talking here. And that knowing that the time, uh, and, and that knowing the time that now it is high, time to wake out of sleep. For now is our salvation nearer than, than when we believed. The night is far spent, the day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off work, the works of darkness, and let us put on the armor of light. Let us walk honestly as in the day, not in riotness and drunkenness, not in ch chamberlain of wantonness, not in strife and envy, but put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ and make not provision for the flesh to fill the lust thereof. Father, thank you again for your blessings this morning. Thank you for the singing. Lord, thank you for just letting us come to church. Thank you for the two young uh, children getting baptized right after church this morning. Lord, I pray that you'd bless them uh, for the rest of their lives, Lord, for this step they're taking. And Father, again, what, uh, give us something out of your precious word this morning. Bless this message. And Father, we'll praise you and honor you in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. I seen a commercial, and they, they said, no, no lives matter till black lives matter. Now, if you agree with that, there's something wrong with you. Yeah, that's right. Amen. Okay, all lives matter. A Chinaman's lives matter. An African's life matters. A Russian life matters. A Ukrainian life matters. An Australian life matters. A Hawaiian life matters. And my life matters. There isn't anyone's life matters any more to God than all life. He made life. All life came from him. You say, well, that's that ain't racist. The other way is racist. You're picking out one group of people on the planet and saying their lives matter more than everybody else's. Sorry, it really doesn't. We all go to hell the same way. We all get saved the same way. I chose life. And that's through Jesus Christ years ago. Tell, go to uh, 2 Peter. 2 Peter. Have you ever wondered how, man? That's on, I'm satisfied. Have you ever been satisfied? What does it take? We're insatiable people, man. We just hate... We hate everything. I mean, people just, you never can you find people and they just, they always complain about something. Uh, you, you've been around me long enough, I'll complain about everything, man. Uh, I complain about me, I'll complain about you. If you're around me long enough, I'll complain about, we'll, we'll get together and we'll complain about somebody else. I mean, it's, it's a funny thing, man, when you start looking at this thing, but there's a way to serve Jesus Christ. Uh, they got the Shroud of Turin. And uh, they, they're more worried about the Shroud of Turin than who the Shroud covered, if it did. I don't believe it did, by the way, but, uh, oh, it got Jesus' face in it where it came through. I don't care, man. I like the Jesus. He's not there. He's not here. He's risen. But they said this, I heard the saying long and loud, there is no pocket in the Shroud, which means when life is at an end, you cannot take it with you, friend. <laughs> I'm just letting you know that this life, when it's over, I don't care what you gain. It's staying here. And the day Jesus Christ rose out of that grave and he come up out of that tomb and the light shined in there, if there was a shroud on him, which I don't believe it was, but if there was and he shone right through, which I don't believe because it was all folded at the other end. He wasn't laid out. He, he got up. He folded his clothes. You know what you ought to do, guys? You ought to make up your own bed in the morning when you get up. Don't make your wife make it up. Jesus made his up. He was dead for three days. He came back and made his up. You go, 
Well, I was dead three days. I don't feel very good. <laughs> no, he didn't do none of that. You know what he did? He folded everything up, had it nice and neat, and then he headed out of Dodge, man, and starts going and doing exactly what he did before. Peter. Peter, uh, he's, uh, Peter grew up. You know, some of us, we need to grow up. We really have some problems. Simon Peter, verse 1, uh, uh, chapter 2, verse 1, or chapter 1, verse 1. Simon Peter, man, I, I tell you what, them songs, they just get me fired up, man. I'm, I'm like, I could have listened to them the whole service and not even had anything. Because when I'm sitting back here and I listen to them sing, or even when we sing the congregationals, I'm sitting there to listen to people say, well, aren't you, I had a guy one time tell me to get rid of this songbook. Uh, well, we got rid of him. But he left. You know, in a matter of time, people will just go. They'll go away. And it's sad, but that's what will happen. Something will happen, and, but you don't get rid of nothing for anybody that works. Uh, and this little song, but Great Hymns of Faith, I, I mean, I found this thing a long, 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 long time ago. And some of these songs in here, man, there is a fountain. There is a fountain. There is a fountain filled with blood drawn from Emmanuel's vein. Why in the world would you get rid of that? And sinners plunge beneath the flood, lose all their guilty stain. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, man. I mean, arise my soul, arise my soul, arise. I don't know about you, but walking like, uh, oh, man, just song after song after song. I was going to try that one, but man, I, thought, I figured I was going to really mess that one up. I ain't going to get rid of my songbook. I ain't going to get rid of my Bible. And I never got rid of you, man. I mean, if you leave, you leave because you want to leave. I don't want to leave. I'm like Peter. Where else am I going to go? You have the words of life. I have no other place to go. You tell me to sit on the back pew, I'll sit on the back pew. I have no other place to go. God's done got me down a path and he's put me right in the right people. I was trained by the right people. I don't need anything else. There is nothing else any better than what I got. Where else are you going to go? You're going to go to something cheaper is what you're going to go to. Or you never learned what it was to start with. Boy, I think he, I thank God he shouldn't. Sure, Simon Peter, <laughs> I better get back to this. Peter learned some things. Simon Peter, first one, a servant and an apostle. You got some stuff there, man. You know, a lot of people, they want to be the apostle. Go back to 1 Peter chapter 1. I like this, man. Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ. How about that, man? He writes 2 Peter, man, he gets that thing right. He goes, Simon Peter, a servant. You know, if you're ever going to really serve God, the older you get, what you'll find out is you're going to have to be a servant. Amen. I mean, when you, when you first get saved, we're ignorant. We're like little babies. Little babies cry, they get everything they want. I seen Beth, we had a little Riley over at our house yesterday, and Beth was sitting there just oogle, 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 and she had me doing the same thing. But, uh, <laughs> but here's a little Riley controlling the whole thing, man. She thinks she wants everything her way, and she gets it. Oh, I want this, I want this. She doesn't have to say none of that stuff, man. She can interpret baby talk. And she just gives her everything she wants. Wally comes over, gets what he wants. Bella comes over, gets, where's my ice cream at, Papa? I just don't want this kind. I want this kind and that kind. I want, I want to eat this one first and that one. Do you have my ice cream? I'm like, what do you, th what do you get with that? At? I'm going to baptize her this morning. I might hold her down for a little bit longer. than. <laughs> I talked to mom and dad and said, are you sure you want me to baptize her? Uh, she doesn't knock her teeth out. Don't blame that on me, man. Her teeth are in a bag. I didn't do that. Simon Peter, a servant and an apostle of Jesus Christ, to them that, are, that have obtained like uh, precious faith with us through the righteousness of God and our Savior, Jesus Christ, grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and of Jesus Christ our Lord, according as, as his divine power hath given unto us all things that pertaineth unto life and godliness. Though, uh, through the knowledge of him that had called us to the glory and virtue, where, whereby uh, are given unto us exceedingly great and precious promises. Man, there, you go through your Bible, there's promises. I got it. one of these days, he's going to take me out of here. He's done promised me some stuff. And I get some things, man, in heaven. And I really, I'm not looking for anything in heaven. I'm just looking for him. Uh, I'm telling you, but he's got some things uh, that you're going to get, whether you want them or not, uh, uh, <laughs> both ways, by the way. Uh, you're going to get some things whether you want them or not. And you're going to get some things whether you want them or not. Uh, it doesn't matter. He has some things for those he loves. And you, he said, I had not seen nor ear heard nor entered the hearts of men the things that God had prepared for them that love him. You couldn't figure the thing out. You're just going to have to wait till you get there and see what he's got. Now the question is, is do you got them? Or does he even think about you to give you them things? There's a way you can get it. Have you ever figured that one or people say all the time, well, you got to be a Christian. You got to be. You ever wondered how to do that? 
I'm going to tell you a little bit about that this morning. All you got, it's simple. It's really simple. I stumbled across it. I've been doing it for 43 years. It seems to work fine. It seems like everybody I talk to says, yeah, that's the way to do it. Dr. Rubin agreed with it. Brother Peacock agrees with it. Well, to a point, I agree with it. Uh, I do some strange things, man, that nobody I don't think can agree with. Uh, but he says, great and precious promises, verse 4, that by these you might be partaker of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. There's a way to get by this stuff. And now you're going to struggle with it your whole life. It's going to come in. There's no way you can get out of it. Lust is there. You see things constantly. You go by billboards. You see this and new cars go down the road or houses and boats and trains and planes and all this other. You'll see all that. But there's a way to get over it. And besides this, giving all diligence, add to your faith, virtue, and virtue, knowledge. Father, again, thank you for your blessing. Bless the service this morning. Lord, bless this message. And Father, we'll praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, I'd like to tell you some things, uh, just a few minutes. Simon Peter is sitting here, and Peter has grown up, and now all of a sudden he knows. He knows that I'm a servant, and I've got to help my brothers and sisters in Christ. Uh, Peter, at the end of the, at 2 Peter, uh, he, he makes a statement over here. Uh, he goes, verse 15, chapter 3, verse 15, an account that the long suffering of our Lord sal uh, is salvation, even as our brother Paul also according to wisdom given us unto us, unto him, hath written unto you, as also in all his epistles, 14 of them, speaking in them things of the things in which are some things hard to be understood. Being a Christian is a lifelong experience. It's not something you learn the day you get saved. You have to grow in grace and all. You have to do it. it there's something you can't get out of it. He's given you a list of things right here that you need to do to add to your faith. And faith has to be the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. By grace are you saved through faith and that not of yourselves to give God. The faith is, the, is the, the start of the thing. You had to have faith to get saved. Uh, but in 1 Peter 1, uh, 2 Peter 1, 1, it says this, Simon Peter, a servant and an apostle of Jesus Christ to them that have obtained like precious faith with us through righteousness of God. And our Savior, Jesus Christ. The righteousness of God is Jesus Christ. If you're in here today and you're not saved, you don't have this. If you're in here today and you got saved, you have this. He's, this is written to saved people. Now, I know it's a, it's a millennial uh, a tribulation passage. You get into some things. But there are some things in here, man. When you start looking at it, it applies right to us. I got saved in 1980. I trusted Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. I didn't know what I did. Honestly, I'll tell you, I did not know what I did. I knew that when I had two options, this one I did not like. This one I had no idea what it was. But I was willing to give that one a shot because I already gave that one a shot for 22 years and it was bad. This one over here seemed to be a good thing. And I liked a good thing. I wanted to go after a good thing. So I just started down this path. I thought I'd start checking that thing out. And some lo and behold, one night I ended up getting saved. And my whole life said, and he says, to, to them that have obtained... 1980, on a back porch in Louisville, Kentucky, I obtained something that I didn't have before, 1980, on that back porch. I knew of a man named Jesus Christ the night before. I knew of the ways of Christ kind of a little bit there the night before. I knew there was a God, and, and there was a three parts, Father, Son, Holy Ghost. I knew that. But boy, that night on that back porch, I obtained something that I never had before. You know what's wrong with a lot of people? You've obtained something, but you never utilize what you obtained. You just let that thing sit there and you don't do anything at all. And that's, that's our mentality. That's an American mentality. Give me something. I don't have to do nothing for what I get. I'm telling you what, with the thing that I, I, I like James, man, James, James, uh, James, James, man. I think I got the verse in here, but I'm going to read it anyways. James is, James says some things that people, they hate what he says. Uh, they can't, they can't, they just can't deal with it, what he says. I think it's James chapter three. Uh, I thought I had it marked here, but maybe I don't. She says, show me your faith. Is it what is it? Two? Huh. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hang on, I'm getting there, I'm getting there, I'm getting there. Somebody got the virtual real high, quick in their head. My brother me just... Says, uh, my brother... Uh, 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 he says, show me, somewhere he says, show me your faith uh, without works, and I'll show you mine with it. And you know, a lot of people think, well, I, I, you, if you find it, holler it out, we'll go back and look at it. A lot of people, what? 18. 18. Good job, man. 
Y'all must be Bible believers. Or you just want to make me look bad. <laughs> Yay. Oh, there you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I thought I had it marked. I got the wrong Bible here, man. I got, I got another. I should have my other Bible, but that's okay. He says, Ye, yea, a man may say, thou hast faith. Now, I believe if you want you to get saved, you get saved. By grace, are you saved through faith? That not of yourself is a gift of God. I believe once you get saved, you're saved. Period. I don't care what you do after that. It doesn't really matter. You're saved. But I like the way he worded that. He goes, uh, yea, a man may say, thou hast faith. And I have works. Show me thy faith without works, and I will show you my faith by my works. I've been doing stuff for, I don't, I don't, I don't attri- uh, attribute anything I've done over the last 43 years to my salvation. Not one bit. My salvation came on a back porch in Louisville, Kentucky in 1980, and that was it. I'm done eternally. I'm gone. I'm in heaven. Whether I do, I'm like the guy who he gave a talent to. He gave 10 men a pound. And he says, what are you going to do with what I gave you? And then he steps back. And he only talks about three of them. He doesn't tell you about the other seven, but he talks about three. One of them guys are really, you know, we're all different, but we shouldn't be lazy. He gave one guy a pound. He went out and made ten. Now, the guy was very, very creative in what he did, and, that, and he probably knew a little bit more. Another guy he gave a pound, he made five. One guy went and buried it in the sand. And the Lord comes back and says, okay, I want my money. What do you got? One says, here's 10. Now, the guy could have made 20 and just gave him 10 back. I have no idea. If he's if he me, Jacob, that's what I would be thinking. <laughs> hey, man, here's your portion. Here's mine. I mean, we kind of split this thing, right? 50-50? Now, where does the 50-50 come in, at, by the way, anyways? Where does the 10-90 come in? You know what our problem is? See, the problem is, is if you think 10% is it and 90% is yours, you're still the baby. Yeah. I don't know about you, but I think everything is his. She is his. My kids are his. The kids' kids are theirs. Or they think they're theirs. They can take them home <laughs> after they can come and get them. Take. No, but they're the Lord's too. Everything I got's His. I don't have nothing. I came into this world with nothing, and I'm going to go out like this. I just said about the shroud of truth. I'm going to go out with nothing. And the only thing I'm going to have is He's going to clothe me with what He wants to clothe me with when I get up there. I like it, man. I like it. Peter says, "How like precious." Faith with us through the righteousness. You only get there one way, and that's through Jesus Christ, the blood of Jesus Christ. You will only get there one way. And if you get it, you'll obtain it. If you don't get it, you won't. But he goes on in this thing, and he goes, uh, to, to them that have obtained like precious faith with us uh, through, righteous, through the righteousness of God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Grace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and Jesus Christ our Lord. I got a question for you. What do you know about God? Now I'm going to list off seven things here in just a few minutes. Maybe. A few minutes. Might be an hour. But I'm going to list off a few things. But you know, if you don't have a knowledge of God, they'll they're useless to you. I could tell you about faith all day long. That's just the start. My faith has went way, way, way beyond that. Now, I still have faith. I have the faith that the Lord gave me the day I got saved. I got more faith than I had then, now. And he's done stuff over me, with me over my period of life that he's given me that I understand a few more things than I did back there on that back porch. But you got to grow. you got to grow. You cannot stay still. You know what this world wants to do is, is it wants to pull you two different ways. Oh, it's okay to be saved. Just, just keep on doing what you want to do. That's insane, man. That's insane. I, I, I think it's crazy myself. Uh, I think there's only one way, and that's Jesus Christ. And if you're doing anything else other than trying to follow after him, you're messing up. And in the end, that thing's going to show out. Now, I don't care what you do. you got to work. I worked on a ship, man. I mean, you're talking about the... I walked in the ET shop on the USS Ponce, and they had books in there that would make Playboy and Penthouse look like Bazooka Joe bubblegum wrappers. I mean, these things were... Filth wasn't even the word. Filth was a good word compared to what this stuff was. And I'm sitting there looking at that thing saying, Lord, what do I do? I said, I can go in there. I'm the boss, man. I can go in there and run it all out right now. And I can show, then I'm going to make them all hate me day one. You know what I did? I did this. I said, and, and wisdom. Wisdom, man. You got to be wise as a serpent and harmless as a dove. I said, what would the devil do? <laughs> what would the Lord do? I said, okay, Lord, here's, and this epiphany hit me in the head. It hurt really bad, but I got over it. I said, guys, here's the deal. I said, I hate those stinking, filthy magazines. I said, you probably hate my Bible. If I walk into this room and I ever catch those magazines out on that desk anywhere in here and you're not in this room, I said, those suckers are going over the side of the ship. You got that? 
I said, you got lockers, you got everything else, put that garbage back up when you're done. I said, here, I come in here, I'm going to sit down and read my Bible. If I leave this room and I leave my Bible on my desk and it's not up, you can throw it overside. I said, is that fair? They said, yeah, that's fair. Within probably 15 weeks, almost every one of those guys in that room was saved. You say, what is that? Wise as a serpent, harmless as a You know the Lord never comes down to you and slams you like you think he should slam you? That means we shouldn't be slamming everybody like we think we should slam them. Amen. Have you ever thought about just giving them a break, man? Amen. There was a day when I wasn't what they were, or I was what they were. And then I'm, I, there, that day I was something totally different. Years down the road, the Lord let me grow. You know what that told me? I need to grow and so do you and so do they. But if you don't grow, guess what? God can never put you in a place like that to even talk to you like that so you can help some people like that. You want fruit? I'm going to tell you how to get fruit. You're going to have to grow. You're going to have to be the tree that can support that fruit or else you'll never have it. Ye shall know them by their fruit. Let me ask you a question. Don't raise your hand. What kind of fruit's hanging off of you? What, what do you got hanging that you can say this, 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 this? Yeah, man, I remember that. I remember this. Where's that stuff at? Grace and peace be multiplied to you through knowledge of God and Jesus Christ our Lord. What do you know about God? Take your Bibles, go over Philippians real quick. I just want to say a couple things. I'll try to hurry through it. Maybe. Man, this is a good book. It's a lifelong experience. We might be here for the rest of your life. I tell you what, I don't, I don't know what you do with this book. I, well, you read it. This is what you do. You read it. You just read it. You just read it and read it, read it, read it, read it. You say, I don't understand. Don't care, man. You just read it anyways. Paul got it. You know what Paul did? This will make you feel real bad. Paul read his whole Bible before he got saved. He read his whole Bible a whole bunch of times before he got saved. If I ask you all today how many times you read your Bible in the last 10 years, and don't, know, don't tell me. Which is between you and God, how many times you read it? But I bet you you read your 401k thing. You know how many times I, my 401k is really doing bad. I got to do something because this, I got 47 different stocks in here and these aren't, the, I got to move these stocks over here. You know everything about your 401k. You probably know everything about your car. Every time best car breaks, something goes wrong, I go get another car. That's how simple it is to fix it. I said it's simple. It's easy, man. Shit, we, Dr. Peacock and Mrs. Peacock got in the car one time, and the little things on uh, the, the back door thing going, Aah! every time you hit the button, it, it's something wrong with the locks, man, the little relays and stuff back there. And she had a couple other little problems with it. I said, man, I'm going to fix your problem Monday. And she said, how are you going to do that? And I went and traded and got her new one. I said, I'm done with it, man. I said, it's easy stuff. I don't have to worry about it. When it wears out, go get something else. I ain't going to spend the time trying to fix something. That's what I got a mechanic for. I take it to him. He says, it's going to cost this much. Don't care. Don't care. Just fix the thing. Could I fix it? Yeah, I can fix it. I don't want to fix it. You know why? It hurts my head. Sometimes when you think too much, man, it hurts. Philippians 3, 7. Philippians. Oh, man, Paul, Paul knew his old Bible. Then he got saved. And, he, and then he goes, I mean, could you imagine the epiphany hitting his head? The Lord had to probably blind him on the road to Damascus. Because if not, and all that stuff started hitting him like that, he would have been running all over the place, hitting walls, and he'd have gone crazy, man. Lord had to blind him so he couldn't do nothing but just sit there and get a flood of data. I mean, it was just, it's probably just overwhelmed him. All of a sudden, he met the one he's been reading about all this time. Have you ever met him? Only you know if you did. Only you know. Philippians 3, 7. But what things were gained to me? You know what's wrong with most of us is we, we struggle to get, 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 get. And when you get, you got to take care of, by the way. But what things were gained to me, those I count lost for Christ. Yea, doubtless I count all things but lost for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord. For whom I have suffered the loss of all things. You got to let go of some stuff, man. Now, if you want to find these seven things in your life, you're going to let go of some things. It's got to go. It's just got to go. Uh, I'm telling you, it's got to go. You just got to let stuff go. Uh, you'll never see it. You got to let go of the world. The world, Paul let go of the world when he got saved. He let go of it, man. I mean, he got on the other side. You want the perfect example? Paul's your guy. He, you say, oh, well, I can't. No, you can. You won't. What you're doing is you're saying, oh, but, but if you're here and you say, I, I can't be like Paul, 
Well, Paul's way over here. You ain't supposed to be like Paul. You know, you're supposed to be like you. I look at people all the time, and every now and then I'll say, well, man, I ain't got no church of 5,000 people. And I'm over here. But a guy that has a church of 5,000 people over there is probably saying, boy, I wish I had a church of 200 again. I wish I had 100. You know, sometimes you never think of what, what you're really asking for. And then you get a hold of that thing, and you wish you didn't. Let go of the world. Your business, your business gets you. Home, home will get you. Family ties will get you. Man, I got everybody mad at me. I don't really care. I do care, but I don't care. I'd rather have Jesus. I'd rather have Jesus than silver or gold. I'd rather have him, man. Uh, you know he can give me silver or gold? <laughs> I, was, <laughs> I was looking for a dryer for uh, Adam. Adam uh, calls me over yesterday and wants me to look at his washer, but his dryer's dead. I think he really suckered me into that uh, somehow. I don't know how that happened, but now I'm giving him a washer and a dryer. But uh, anyways, I had a dryer out in the garage, so I go out there and I said, I got to make sure it works. And I'm not going to give him that one. I'm going to give him a better one. But uh, I plug it up, and it shoots the stuff out the, the bottom of it. I'm like, what is all that? And I go down, and there's this diamond, man. It looks, it looks like a real diamond in an earring. I said, Beth, Ben, you can put one right there if you want. Are you? <laughs> so I'm going to take you to the jewelry store. It wouldn't surprise me if that thing, I know what a diamond looks like. I'm not, I'm not, it's not it looks better than a, a cubic zirconium. She goes, it could be. No, I, I had a Jew teach me how to look at diamonds. That thing just looks real. But man, that thing's like this big. And I mean, it shot out of the back of that dryer like that. I'm like, whoa, where did this thing? I said, I'm going to keep the dryer in case the other one's in there. <laughs> I'll give them another dryer. I know there's nothing inside that one. But you know what? You got to let go of wealth, man. God can give you wealth at any time if he wanted to. Ananias and Sapphira in chapter 5 of Acts is the perfect example of that. If you, get, if you don't watch out, man, this thing will creep in and start sucking you in just like that. And just like the Lord wants you to grow by grace and knowledge, slowly the devil will come in slowly in your life and start giving you things. And pretty soon you don't think you can do without it. Man, I've been in, uh, in Romania and you walk into those people's houses and the floor is still dirt. It's so hard and packed down that they sweep it every day. And their dirt floor is cleaner than a lot of our houses are. Those, ho those homes over there are cleaner. I would, you could almost eat off the floor. That's how well those ladies take those. And the floor is dirt. You sit there and say, this, the attic is dirt. That's how they inside. They use dirt for everything. We, we've come so far from that, we can't live like that no more. Ananias and Sapphira thought they could. And they thought they could pull one over God. God watches everything, by the way. There isn't none of this halfway stuff. What do you know about God? You're supposed to learn about him. You can't be half committed. So You know what's wrong with us today? You know what's wrong with Christianity in America? We're half committed. We really should all be committed. <laughs> I'm thinking there's the light flashing again. See that? I don't care about it. We all, we all should be committed. 100%. I don't, I don't want to, I have to do, you should work to live, not live to work. You know what's wrong with this world today? A lot of us live to work. You think your job's everything. You're going to get old and gray and they're going to kick you out, man. They booted me out of, out of Lexus Nexus. I was happy. I was smiling, man. I was laughing. I thought, they was going, I thought I was going to be postal. If, I, if you could pack and carry, they'd have probably thought I was going to go postal and shoot them all because I was laughing. They just answered a prayer that I prayed on the way over there. I was going to do it my way. I was going to quit. I already knew the Lord told me to quit. I needed to quit. I'm going to do what he tells me to quit. I'm just done. I'm sick of this place. I was at odds with the world, and I was at odds with uh, the Lord, and I knew the Lord was winning, and I got to get out of this place, and I got to go serve Jesus Christ. I just didn't know what that was quite yet. And I said, all right, this is what he wants me to do, and I know he wants me to quit, and I'm going to quit. And all the way over in my car, I was ready to quit. And I get in there, and they go, Mr. Elliott, we're sorry. You're going to be real sorry in a minute when I tell you I quit. And they go, no, we, we messed up. I, they, they stopped me before I got to say anything. I calmed down. I'm like, okay, let me listen here. You know, sometimes it's better to listen. You got two ears, one mouth. Twice as, you should listen twice as much as you talk. Sometimes you should just shut up. So I just listen. They go, we, we got you, out and we're going to lay you off. But you can have a job. But you can lay you You see, God gave me an opportunity to get a job there. That would be like giving me a hammer and saying, I'm not going to let you hit your hand, but you can have the hammer. Hit your hand. No, I don't want to hit my hand. Taking that job would be like beating myself in the hand with a hammer again. I'm like, that's stupid. I'm sitting there going, the lady said, I said, why would I want another job with you? I don't want the one I got. And they go, well, we're going to give you seven, six months severance, six months this, six months that, and we're going to let you work for another month. 
I said, seven months? I said, I'm Jacob. I can figure out how to do this in seven months. You said, what was that? That was God. But you know what? Sometimes you got to let go. I knew I was half committed. I was putting everything I could here and everything I could put there, and God said, I want it all. I'm like, I want to give it all to you. I just don't know how to do it. He said, I'm going to help you out. But he gave me the option to stay there. I'm like, uh-uh, man. I've done been there, done that, got the T-shirt thing. Oh, it ain't going to happen to me again. I said, I'm out of here, man. Now all I got to do is go home and figure out how to tell my wife this just happened. <laughs> she is going, I thought she was going to just lose it. She did. She fell down laughing at me. And so did Elizabeth back here. Laughed at me, both of them. I'll never forget that. My, here I am in one of my most terrible moments in my entire life. I am now without a job. The church hadn't picked me up yet, by the way. I had no money. I mean, this was like, I was, it was over. Life was over in six or seven months. If I can't make this thing work. And it wasn't me that was going to make it work. It was going to be him make it work anyways. I come here and got some of the guys together and say, hey, guys, this is what happened. What do you all think? Oh, we ought to pick you up for support. I'm like, yeah. Does that make me a missionary or something? <laughs> they pick me up. You can't be, you know, a distraction, man. There's a, there's a fishing lure. Andrew knows all about fishing lures. He used to make me sick. We'd go to a lake, and he'd go around the lake telling everybody how to fish. He, I got him some of those CDs when he was a kid, and it was how to fish and how to do this and fishing around the world and fishing here and fishing there and all that. And he learned all the lures. He said, and he'd go and look at the fish, and he said, use this bait, and you'll get that. And I'm like, you're a little, you're a little punk, man. You're a little stupid, snotty-nosed kid. How, I'm a man. How could you tell me how to fish? I didn't even have a tackle box. It was his tackle box. I was sitting there going, I don't even fish. And he'd go around, and if you did what he said, you'd catch fish. I'm sitting there going, what a thing, man. There's a tackle. It's called... 10,000 fish death stalker. Now, any of you fishermen in here, you probably know what that is. It has a little bitty trailing bait. You, you've seen them. You've seen them. Uh, it's got this little thing, spinner. It spins around. It, says, it gives off the fleeting bait fish imitation. It's an imitation. But fish don't know that. He goes, which act like a dinner bell to predators looking to eat an easy meal. You know, we get distracted by the stupidest things. I read that, man, and I was getting distracted this morning. You go out to search something and, and to find something, or you're looking for something, and all of a sudden it comes up with this page, and here's this article about this, and all the next thing you know, you're over here doing this. I'm like, wait a minute, I just got distracted. I'm talking about distraction. I just got distracted. And he said, I got to get back to where I was. You get distracted over here. You know what, man? We are, we are distracted about everything we do. Shiny object syndrome is what we call it. Don't let it consume you, consume you like it did the fish. Some of them big fish, you have to put stuff, they can be gotten too. Because the right lure in the right place will get any fish. Have you ever seen those guys come in with them big old sailfishes and sharks and everything else? I'm telling you, man, brother, we, we get distracted. You got to learn about yourself. What do you know about God? Number one, you can't be distracted. You can't be half-hearted. You can't be half-committed. You got you to be there. How do you keep from being half, or half committed? You can't be 75% committed. You're on your way to heaven or you're not. If you got saved and you're going to put heaven off to the side so you can live your life, you're wasting your life. Heaven is in your future. And if you aren't going in that direction, you're wasting your life. That is where you're headed, and that is coming real quick. Uh, your decision. You can't be distracted. you got to get your mind working. Throw the distractions off the side. Okay, I don't care if you got houses and cars and boats and planes and trains. and I don't care what you got. If that stuff is distracting you, get rid of it. You got to make a decision. All options are off the table. You got to get to the place where you decide what I'm going to do. I'm going to serve Jesus. Now, I'm talking about these seven things I'm going to talk about here in just a second. You can never apply those till you get to a place in your life where you're settled. You've got to be committed to understand what those things are and how they've. That's why Peter put them in 2 Peter. They weren't in 1 Peter. You know why? Because he thought he was an apostle in 1 Peter. And guess what? He was. But by the time he got to 2 Peter, he realized, no, I'm a servant. You would think that he would have been the apostle of apostles. Because he's Peter, the first pope, right? Right? The first one? They found his bones under the Vatican in, in uh, I forget what year it was. But they had forgotten that they found a, a sarcophagus in, in Jerusalem that had Peter's name on it in 56. I guess Peter died in both places. 
I have no idea. Maybe he got a 3D printer and made a copy of his skeleton. I have no idea. But they're trying to do anything. Decisions. All options are off the table. And you head in the directions you have chosen. What you, would you choose? Let me ask you a question. What would you choose? I'm going to try to tell you how to walk this Christian walk. That, that's what it takes. I made a choice in 1980. Didn't know exactly what I made, but I, that's a choice I made. And I went after it. And what I found is day after day after day, that walk got easier and easier and better and better. And I'm satisfied. I'm satisfied with the choice I made in 19... There's times, man, I'm thinking, Lord, you know, I can make a billion bucks, man. Maybe not a billion, but I can make a million easy. A million is chump change. Ten million is probably chump change. You, to some people, that seems like a lot of money. To me, that's chump change. My father owns a cattle on a thousand hills. As a matter of fact, he owns a thousand hills. And he owns the planet that the thousand hills are on. Amen. And he owns the solar system that the planet is in. And the green grass grows all around, all around. You ever heard that song? He owns it all, man. Everything I see, he owns. Why would I care about a million dollars? A chunk of change, man, just a chunk of change. Discipline. Now, here's where the problem starts coming in. you got to discipline yourself. I knew when the Lord told me in 2014 to start reading my Bible twice a year. Has God ever talked to you? I knew when he started telling me, I said, I won't do it. This diet, I, I told the lady, I said, I will not do it. I'm nine pounds away from being completed in this diet. I went under 230. The day I was 229, I am nine pounds away from completing this diet. And I'm not going to stop there, but that's where I'm at. I told the lady, I said, unless I had that 20-week window, I would never do it. Because I could lose 25. I could lose 50. I'd gain it right back. Why? Because I, I didn't have the window to do it in that start and finish. I got to start and finish. I got started in 1980 on a back porch, and the finish is the day I take my last breath. And I get to go home for glory forever. You know, what? Beth goes, well, you've almost, you've succeeded. Yeah, I've succeeded. Why? Because I, I had a goal in front of me. I knew exactly what I was going to do. I, I, I was, you had to discipline yourself. I said, Beth, man, I mean, I felt so sorry for her. We just started this on March the 22nd or 23rd. Her birthday's on the 26th. No birthday cake. A year without a birthday cake. And she was 60. It wasn't just a birthday. This is the day she turned, like, ancient. <laughs> she had to go get her hair colored, man, because it was all gray and everything else. Warts coming off. No, I'm going to get it when I get home. Don't worry about it. <laughs> she started it, man. She just said, 60, 60, 60. I, got, I took one of our protein bars, and I put 60 on the protein bar and lit it. That was her birthday protein bar. It was like a birthday cake, kind of. It was good. She didn't share it with me. She ate the whole thing all by herself. But discipline, you got to discipline yourself. If you don't discipline yourself, you'll never do. If I told you to add to your faith virtue, you would never do it because you're not going to discipline yourself to do it. Because you won't understand what virtue is to do it. The question is, are you, are you half committed? Most of us are half committed. We, we won't get committed to nothing, man. If you, if you get yourself committed to something, you ought, to, you ought to complete that thing. You will never achieve your goals. What is your goals? Devotions is the next one. I sit there and I listed all three things there, right? You got to be you got to get away from the distractions. This world's full of it. you got to make some decisions. you got to discipline. Focus those decisions down. You know what the world wants you doing all this stuff. Right. you got to focus those things down. We're getting ready to go to camp. There could be 200 people there this year. If this thing keeps going the way it's going, to, there could be a camp one day where there's 400 people, not very long from now. And you know what we had to do? We had to focus down and focus down and focus down and focus down on just a couple things and, and make those things work. And once we did, you guys are all part of that. And we brought that thing out, and now we're sitting here. No man's an island. There isn't one person that, on any part of this that, if it, that this thing would have happened without that. It took all of us. It took Dr. Peacock preaching. It took Joe doing his experience back there. It took mine. It took yours. How about the ladies? Can you imagine? Y'all pray for these ladies, man. If there's 200 people show up, they're going to have to do 600 meals a day. 600 meals with little mouths. Going, hey, 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 can I have seconds? And if you throw seconds in there, it might be seven or 800. Beth's going, no seconds. Robin's going, no seconds, man. <laughs> None. <laughs> I don't believe it. They're softies, man. I always go in there in the middle of the night and break into stuff and eat it. And they come in the next one. Somebody come in and eat them. Who would do that? Me. You got to become, de and then you got to be devoted. You work. And I told you this. You work to live, not live to work. And Paul goes on in, over in Philippians and he goes, 
and do count them but dung. You know what dung is, don't you? All the stuff that we value, that man probably had. Now, he didn't have Maseratis and the cars and the houses and everything, but he had, he had wealth. And he threw it off the side. He said, it's just but dung. That I may win Christ. What is your motive today? you got to get your motive right. And he goes on, he says, and be found, Philippians 4, 9, or 3, 9. And be found in him not having mine own righteousness. You'll never get to heaven with yours. Which is of the law. Man, I'm going through Romans on Thursday night. Psh, that's an amazing book. I'll never get through Romans. It's, it's, it's worse than uh, Genesis. But you, the law, the law was just, the law was for sinners. Yet we point out everybody's faults. You should be doing this. You should be doing this. The law was for sinners to bring them to Christ. Once you're to Christ, you don't need the law no more. He done fulfilled it. Man, I got free in him. Now there's some things I need to do. But you know what we are? We, we, that's thinking Baptist, man. We're worse than everybody. Offerings, free will offering. It's a free will offering. It's out of your heart. Well, you don't want to give nothing. You're just using a verse for your own self. That you go, go look Jesus in the face and say, oh, I know it's a free will offering. <laughs> I don't have to. He gave it all. Now, how in the world are you going to go to somebody who gave it all and tell him you, you don't think you should give nothing? Now, I'm not, I don't want your money. Keep your money. I'm talking about everything. I'm talking about you. He wants you. He don't want your money. If he gets you, he got it. I remember Brother Eastup looked, East looked at me one time. And he goes, <laughs> well, I ain't going to say what he said. <laughs> it was too funny. But you know what he was saying is that God wants you. If he can get you, he'll get your wallet. If he gets you, he'll get your family. If he gets you, he'll get your life. If he gets your life, he might actually do something with it. Amen. Have you ever thought about that? As long as you've got control of it, he ain't going to give you nothing. Because you're going to want to do it your way. He don't want you to do it your way. He wants you to do it his. It goes on. I'm going to get to this here in a second, man. I'll just run through them other ones real quick. That I may know him. He goes in verse 9 says, And be found in him, not having my own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through the faith of Christ. So he starts that thing out with faith. The righteousness which is by God, of God, by faith, that I may know him, the power of his resurrection. These are some things you got to know. Before you get virtue in your life, before you can add your virtue, all the other stuff, there's some things you need to know what you're dead in him. And, and now you live in him. Paul says, I die daily, man. He goes, I die daily. When's the last time you died daily? And the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings. Hey, I'm like the next person. I don't like to hurt myself any more than anybody else does. But I know one thing. The things he's put me through has caused me to get a lot closer to him than, than I would have naturally. You know, when you tell people when you talk to them, when they don't want to go through anything or they don't want anything to happen to them bad and they just, they just like their comfort, man. That's like AC. I think they, we ought to do away with AC altogether and lights probably. Go back to candlestick, man. Throw the windows down. Open the doors up, man. Do something. Get air flowing. How did we make it 6,000 years without AC? If you got an AC that bad, go north. Get up in Canada, man. Live up there. I'm telling you, I don't, I don't, we, are, we are spoiled rotten, and we don't think if we drive down the road, Beth, her car shakes a little bit. I think, I mean, I'm like, you tell me, it's almost like being in hell in the front seat with a car with her. Everything is wrong because the steering was shaking just a little bit. I'm like, it, it, who knows, the tires could be out, but I don't know, uh, oh, no car's going to fall apart. I'm like, I said, I'm, this is not a house with a dripping thing in it, is it? <laughs> First Corinthians, he said, I die daily. What do you know about his word? What do you know about God? What do you know about his word? I've been saying in Sunday school, I'll go real quick. The average words on a page in your Bible is 598. How are you going to know anything about God if you're not reading his Bible? How could you possibly know? Now, I'm telling you, you you're supposed to be like Peter, like John, like Paul. We're supposed to be like that. But some of us aren't that way. Because everything else is taken taken away. There's 598 words on the average page of a Bible. The average adult reads 200 to 350 words per minute. Not me. Uh, I'm probably 10 or 15 words a minute. Uh, th that's almost a page every two minutes. If you could read a page every two minutes, you could read your Bible in 1.5 hours a day in 30 days. How many of you read your Bible this year? Don't don't show a hand. I don't need that. What do you know about his word? How are you going to know anything about him if you're not reading the Bible? 
He did not tell me to read the Bible so I could study to show myself approved on God and know everything in the wide world. He asked me to read the Bible so when he wants to reveal something to me, it's easy for him to show it to me. Because I know right where it's at. Except for the thing over in James. <laughs> and probably like 90% of the other stuff. But I know I read it somewhere. If you don't read it. 1.5 hours a day. Is, is the world that important to us that we lose track of God on a daily basis? He gave you something to get you out of trouble. What do you know about his way? I'm getting ready to get in this thing right now. I mean, come, watch this. What do you know about God? What do you know about his word? What do you know about his ways? Psalm 103.7, he says this. He made known his ways unto Moses. Don't you think if he made a note unto Moses, he'd make it known unto you? Well, he talked to Moses face to face. How's he going to talk to us right there? How can he make his ways known to you if you're not in this thing? How can you understand when Paul or Peter or James or John says something if you're not in this thing to, to even comprehend what he's saying? I'm so tired of people. The Bible says, judge not, at least you be judged. That's a fool saying that. First of all, they don't even know what the verse says. All they're trying to do is get you to get off their back. I like that verse, man. That's a good verse. I, that's what, what started me down the road to get saved. He maketh his ways known to Moses. Psalm 119.1. Blessed are the undefiled in his way, in the way. What? In the way of God. Who walk in the law of the Lord. Blessed are they that keep his testimonies and that seek him with the whole heart. They're, not, they're committed. Fully committed. He goes, they also do no iniquity. They, they walk in his ways. Do you know what his ways are? How can you know his, possibly know what the ways are? Now go back to Peter. You got to know his ways. His ways are past finding out, I'll tell you that. But boy, you can sure have a fun with a lot of them. I've learned some things in the last 43 years that is just, it gets me going. It just keeps me going. I can wake up every morning and do something and keep on going. And I'm sitting there going, Lord, what a waste. I feel like I'm wasting. You know what I feel like I do is all I do is help people all the time. He goes, well, maybe that's what I wanted you to do. Have you ever thought about that? I said, oh, yeah, maybe that is right. I said, you do give me an opportunity to do that a lot. And just like that guy selling me those two furnaces, he wanted $600 for them. I got them for 200 bucks. And I'm sitting there going, Lord, man, this is cool. I said, I like, I like stuff like that. And I spend, and I didn't even spend your money, by the way. I, I'm losing my blessing right now, but that was my money, not yours. I'm sitting there going, hey, how about that, man? I like that. I said, now I can go out and spend money and just, how much money do you give to God? Yeah, come on. Really, how much do you give him? I said, do you, do you actually count it out? Man, I, I remember one time, long, long time ago, I did this. I do it a lot of times. I try not to do it anymore because I usually don't have any. I spike, man. I usually don't have no money because I know what's going to happen if I do, man. He's going to get me. I just reached in there and did this. So he said, let not your right. I took it out of context, man. If you're going to take a verse out of context, make sure that it falls out on God's side, not yours. Okay? That's how you ought to do that. Let not your right hand. And I reached in my wallet. Now I'm a sailor, man. Single sailor. E6. Lots of money. And I pulled out everything that was in there. And I just threw it in the plate. I don't have a clue. It could have been $2. Could have been, I, to this day, I don't know how much it was. I said, Lord, you know that, that I got bills to pay. And if I give this, I'm not going to have my money to pay the bills. And I just, peace, I just did it. I'm done. And once I was done, I forgot all about it. Until I'm going to preach about it, and then I'll remember it. But I forgot all about it. I don't care. I don't care. I go to my teller. And back then, we still had tellers with credit cards. I mean, you stick them in. We, I'm not some guy off the ark or something. And I went in there, and I had two or three times the amount of money in the bank I thought I had. I said, what you're worrying about? Now, I don't know if somebody else lost money, and I got it. I have no idea. But I had the money in the bank to pay the bill the whole time. You say, what is that? You just give God what he wants and let him have it. You say, why? Because it's his. He knows what's his and what's mine. He says, and besides this, giving all diligence, back to Peter, verse 5. And besides this, giving all diligence... That's everything you got. You cannot be, if you're not committed, you can't do this. Peter's talking to some people that are committed to what they're doing. Brother, I tell you what, go up there and try to get 200 kids together, 200 people, and take care of all their needs for a week. You're talking about some committed people, man. You guys are, you, amaze, you really do amaze me. I mean, these ladies are up early in the morning. You get in the kitchen, and it's, it's the worst thing. If you go, just stay out of the kitchen. I'm telling you, man, my wife hates me when, this week. This will be Mike hate week. I'm just sitting there going, in the corner, her and Robin. 
and get out of my way. You're in my way. Get out of my way. Move. Their energy comes. And all the other ladies will be there. And if I walk in, don't talk to me. Don't talk to me. I got to do it. I mean, I'm, I'm useless until they want a loaf of bread. And then they say, we need a loaf of bread three days. And then they'll call you five times while you're on the way and five times on the way back. Brethren, I'm telling you what, you know what? They're so focused in what they're doing. They are committed. They are committed to getting, at the end of the week, they'll be dead tired. Y'all forgive them next Sunday when they come back like, they're going to be out of it. But the whole camp's going to be there. How about you got 200 kids or however many kids are going to be out there on the field playing games? And these suckers got to blow up about a billion balloons. And get them all over the place so they can throw them at each other. And then we got to go back and pick up all the balloons on the... I'm telling you, man, it is, it's a crazy time. But if you don't commit yourself to something, you'll never... You know, if we never committed ourselves to it, this wouldn't even be here today. And there would be a lot of kids around this country who would not be able to come to camp. Oh, they'd go to camp. They wouldn't get what they're going to get here. We set this thing up so it, they're going to get fed. In the kitchen and in the chapel. And out on the playing field. They're going to get fed. You know what they're going to do? They're going to learn how to work together as teams. They all don't come from one church, and we're from this church and against that. No, no, no. They're all, they're just, they're just thrown everywhere. You think you know what they got to do? They got to learn how to work with people, which is good. He says, but besides this, giving all diligence, everything you got, if you want to serve Jesus Christ, you can do it. But you're going to have to give everything you got. Add to your faith. Add to your faith. James says, yea, I, this is the verse I read a little while ago. Yea, a man say, thou hast faith, and I have works. Without works, I have works. Thou hast faith, and I have works. Show me thy faith without works. How in the world, and I see this is why I like that verse. How in the world could you tell me you love Jesus Christ and won't do nothing? I have a problem with that. I think one saved, always saved. I don't think if you tell me I've saved, I got saved on the back porch in Louisville because I said, you heard my testimony, that doesn't count. But if you tell me you got saved and you know you got saved and you trust in the blood of Jesus Christ, I want to know why you aren't doing nothing for him. He did everything for you. The only thing that could keep you from doing that is you never got any knowledge about him. You're not reading your Bible. You're not doing anything to learn something about him. Because the more I learned about him, the more I got fascinated. He let me do electronics and, and learn about him about the same time at the same rate. You know what got me about electronics is here's this little electron flowing through this big old circuit card and flowing through all this other stuff. And if you manipulate it just right, you can get it to do this. So you create the circuit to do that, and you create this one to do that. And then you bring those two together to get another output. And then this one goes here, and this one goes here, and then you create this. And these all go together to do this, to give you this. And then this comes out here, and then pretty soon it goes out to the sky. You could take your voice and imprint that thing on, a, on an electronic signal and, and start applying that thing and, and get it all the way through to where you change frequencies and get it high enough to where you can shoot it out, depending on where you want to shoot it. Or radar, where it bounces the signal back and gets a, gets a display back. All that stuff, when you, I saw, I, you do that with a little electron. That just fascinated me. Until I met Jesus. And then on the other side, I said, wait a second. You're the one who's done that. <laughs> this is your stuff. This, ain't, this isn't their stuff. They just figured some things out. This is yours. And then all of a sudden, that stuff goes off the wayside, and now here he is. Man, I'll tell you what. Add to your, add your faith virtue. Now, here we go. I'm going to, real quick. This is real, real quick. Virtue. Virtue, strength, moral goodness, temperance, chastity, and charity. Power. Power. How can you get virtue? Jesus said virtue went through him. How can you get virtue? How can you understand virtue if you're half committed? You need to be 100% in this thing. Then he goes, add to your virtue knowledge. I can stop right there and be done. Without this thing right here, you cannot serve him. If you're just coming to church on a Sunday morning and that's all you're doing, you're wasting your life. Stay home. Stay home. Stay home and watch Jimmy Swaggart or something. He said, he just said stay home. No, Joel Sin will be good too. I actually, actually tape one, watch one, and watch the other one afterwards. Get somebody on the East Coast, Central Coast, West Coast, whatever, and just watch three or four of them. Because if your life is so valuable to you that, that God means nothing at all, then what are you doing here anyways? You say, oh, you're going to run half people off. No, most of you guys are all here. But I'm just telling you, man, you're, you're wasting. Add your virtue. Add your virtue knowledge. 2 Timothy said this. 2 Timothy 2.14. Of these things, put them in remembrance. 
You're supposed to be remembering what you hear. I'm not saying we all have to be Bible students and we all have to be missionaries and and evangelists and preachers and teachers and everything else. But I'm telling you what, you should be learning some things. You know what? You know who needs it? Your kids, your wife, your husbands. You need it. Your grandkids are going to need it. The people you run into on a daily basis are going to need it. You should know them by the fruits. What kind of fruit you got? Add to virtue, add to virtue knowledge. To knowledge, temperance. You know what temperance is? It's moderation. See, you've got to have everything right now. Don't you think the Lord knows exactly what you need when you need it? Have you ever thought about just waiting? Wait, I say, on the Lord. Wait. I like Psalm 27, 14. Wait on the Lord. Be of good courage. Most people aren't that way. They're, I'm going to wait. He ain't give me what I want. <laughs> That's what most of us do. And he shall strengthen that heart. I, wait, I say on the Lord. You know, if you wait and he get, tells you, you'll know exactly what he wants you to do and you'll do it. And you'll, feel, you'll, you'll be satisfied like his song they sang. I'll be satisfied. I'm satisfied. Mark 4, 30, 39, he says, and he arose and rebuked the wind. Could you imagine that? I mean, the sea, I've been out there, man. They either go down the sea in ships. I've been there, done that. I've been out there in the middle of this thing. And the waves, I mean, they just mount up on. And he goes up, peace, be still. And they just go, Phew. The whole ocean, man. Now, I know he's on the Sea of Galilee, but he could have done that in the middle of the ocean just as easy on the Ga- Sea of Galilee. That's right. And he calms that whole thing down. And you, you know what God does? You know what the Lord does? He always calms you down. Always. Those guys were running around like chickens with their head cut off, thinking they're all going to die. And he had no problem. You know when it comes time for him to do something to you, it'll be peace. The peace of God that passes all understanding. It'll just be right there. You don't have to do anything about it. I'm telling you some things that you need in your life, but you'll never get these things in your life until you get some knowledge about him. If you don't understand who he is, and you don't understand much about his word, and you don't know anything about his ways, virtue, knowledge, temperance, faith, none of that stuff will matter to you anyways. But if it matters to you, these things will matter to you too. And goodliness. You know, patience, patience Patience is one of those, it is a virtue, man. It's just a virtue. And it's a hard thing to learn because our country says, you can, every boss wants you to do, the, let me give you a hint, young people. You're going to go to work for somebody one day, and they're going to hire you in thinking, tell me, and you're going to think you're the greatest thing since peanut butter. I'm like a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Look at that. Everybody just loves me. For about the first year, and the honeymoon's over, then they want you to produce like 10 times what you, they really wanted you to do at the beginning. They never quit. The only thing you can do is outproduce them. But that's going to wear you out. You know what this world wants? It wants to use you up and spit you out. That's what it wants to do. I'm like, no, man. I just want to, I'd rather the Lord chew me up and spit me out. It's cool because when he gets done, he can put it all back together again. And, and to temperance, patience, and to patience, godliness. That's to be like God. You know the only way you can be like God? Right there. There's no other way. You can't know him and how he thinks without this book in your head. There's just no way you can do it. And to patience, godliness. And to godliness, brotherly kindness. You cannot love him. That guy that came up to him and said, Lord, what are the two, what's the greatest command? He said, love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy might. And love thy neighbor as thyself. You can't do it without God, but you got to do it. I'm going to tell you right now, you need to do it. You mad at somebody today? I can't think of one person on this planet I'm mad at, that I hate. I don't want to see nobody go to hell. As a matter of fact, I don't want to see nobody stand before the judgment seat of Christ and have to face Jesus Christ and answer for something that they don't have to answer for. I think they should get the thing right. Just get the thing right. And then when you go there, we can have fun. And we can get it over quick. Man, I wish you could do that. (laughs) And a brotherly kindness. And a brotherly kindness, charity. Charity is, is, I I like the way Dr. Rotman said this, that's the crowning point. The crown is charity. Until you get all, everybody says, well, I don't, no, you don't understand charity. You know what charity is? Charity is Jesus Christ coming to a bunch of lost people like us that didn't deserve anything, and he gave us eternal life for free. He came to a bunch of poor, deserve, undeserving people that didn't have anything. That's what charity is. It's a handout. He gave us a handout. But, brother, I'm telling you what, to get to know that thing and, and to love, the love of Christ is just impossible. Now, I said all that to say this. 2 Peter 
2 Peter 1 8, and, and we'll take it to the barn. You know why people keep dropping out like flies? I mean, they just go away. They never make it. 2 Peter 1 8. For if these things, I just read them to you faith, virtue, knowledge, temperance, patience, godliness, brotherly kindness, charity, with the knowledge of God. If these things be in you and abound, not just in you and abound, only you can do that. Smokey the Bear says only you can prevent forest fires. Only you can get the knowledge of God. You have to seek it with your whole heart. That they, they make you that ye shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. But he that lacketh these things. Now, there's the opposite side of that. But he that lacketh these things is blind. That's not me saying that. That's the Lord. The Holy Spirit through uh, Peter. And cannot see it far off. Your vision is too short. You're, you're looking too close. He says, you can't see it far off. And have forgotten that, they, that he was purged from his old sins. Wherefore, the rather, brethren, give diligence. He says it again. To make your calling and election sure. For if these things be in you, you shall never fall. You want to be able to walk through this life and make it to the end right? Then you're going to have to understand that book. You're going to have to understand God. You're going to have to understand his ways. You're going to understand his word. How he wants you to understand it. And then you can add these things into your life. And then you could be the pillar. You always hear me talking about being a pillar. I think you should be a pillar. I think old people should be a pillar to the young people. I think the young people are looking for old people to show them how to do it. And guess what? One of these days, these young people are going to take our place. Who are you leaving behind to take your place? Who are you helping to take the place? You know, that's why I like this camp. People say, why do you do the camp? I don't do it so everybody in the country knows that Anchor Baptist Church is doing it. I don't care about Anchor Baptist Church. You know what I care about? I care about a bunch of kids around this country that need something. And we're their only hope sometimes. And if we can give them a week of something in their lives and they can go back to their church and excite them and maybe, just maybe, they can carry this thing on. Well, let me ask you a question. How much do you know about God today? I'm done. How much do you know about God? How much do you know about His Word? And how much do you know about His ways? Father, thank you for your many blessings today. Lord, this thing is so simple, really. Uh, our Bibles are is just as simple as they could be. The way is simple. The path is there. Lord, all we have to do is get on it. Lord, help us to not be half committed, Lord, but help us to commit ourselves. Lord, if there's someone in here today, Lord, that's half committed, I pray that you touch their heart and show them their need to be committed, fully committed to you. And Lord, that uh, they'd get, get uh, started down that path, wherever it is. Little baby steps, all it takes. But Lord, help us to all get started and keep going. Lord, this thing is coming to a close rapidly. And one of these days, you're going to come back and get us out of here, and we're going to be gone. And Lord, we won't ever have an opportunity to do anything for you ever again uh, like we're going to get, we get the opportunity now. Lord, open our eyes that we may see. Lord, help us to hear the word of God. Lord, speak to our hearts and we'll praise you and honor you in Jesus' precious holy name. Amen. Amen. While these are playing, let's go ahead and stand and sing hymn number 390.